So happy 4th of July if you're American and happy 4th of July. Just I hope you're enjoying the 4th day of July in your country. Um, I know it's kind of a weird day for a uh, American to be streaming, but um, I'm going to admit something that you, I probably shouldn't. I'm not I'm not big on fireworks. So <laughs> I don't I don't know something about explosives and uh, possible fire hazards and loud noises and crowds and bugs. Just it's not my favorite thing. So I usually stay in on the 4th of July and just celebrate from home. So I'm glad you guys are here with me. Let's see. Um, got a couple family members from Houston. Hi guys. And Marisa. Is it Marisa? Marisa? Um, hi from Mexico. And could turn the stove off, it's heating up too much in Texas. It is hot. That is why I am inside and not outside with the droves of people and the fire and the craziness out there. Happy 4th, everybody. <laughs> okay, so if you have been on my channel long, you know that recently I made a video with um, this little guy for my coffee shop project, and so today, I kind of went, went back and forth on this, uh, if I thought it would work for my project, even put like a little poll in the video to get y'all's opinion. Um, but I decided I wanted to make something a little bit more industrial and um, I actually talked at length with Joanne about this. And so I, I uh, um, taking her advice, <laughs> thought I would definitely want to look for um, something that would be more efficient in something that's a coffee shop, not just a one pot maker thing. Houston is flooding, so not good. Yeah. My uh, parents live in Houston and they sent me a video of the downpour, so definitely no. So sorry about that. Stay safe, stay dry. Um, I know you guys are probably inside right now, so stay, stay safe. Um, so I definitely wanted to make a uh, bigger, like multiple pot coffee maker, and I may still keep this guy in my project, um, but he may be on the floor or somewhere, I don't know, like packaged away, like they use it every now and then type of thing. What I looked up, let me look, oh hi, someone from Finland, Gail from Finland, hi Gail. What time is it in Finland? I think that's the most interesting thing to figure out um, what time it is in different places, because I have no idea. I rarely know what time it is where I am, so. Um, this is the coffee maker that I was looking up, and since I have kind of a vintage 50s, 60s phone, um, I went with this, I'm pretty sure this is kind of a 70s type coffee pot maker thing. It's got like the, fake wood, plastic wood stuff on it. Um, and I I know it's got like the clear glass coffee pots, but I'm thinking I maybe don't need to make the coffee pots because maybe they would have been stolen. Um, like if, uh, okay, <laughs> y'all may not even know what I'm talking about. If you're new to the channel, you may not even know. So I'm just, I, I brought it out. This is my abandoned coffee shop project. Um, it's easier to show you in my face cam, um, but then I'll show you details in the other camera. Uh, but it's basically, it's supposed to be this abandoned shell of a coffee shop. And um, I made this phone in one of my videos. I made the peeling wallpaper, the, um, the countertop with the sink. I made a little tree sprouting up. So it's gonna be something that's definitely old that weather has taken over so that's why i said maybe the coffee pots would be stolen or um white line widow is saying maybe broken coffee pots oh it's 3 a.m in finland wow <laughs> so <laughs> you fall asleep i understand that is late um 10 a.m in south australia awesome oh and deb is in mississippi too. So she's probably, besides my Texas people, pretty close to the same time zone. Um, 
Okay. Oh, let me take this coffee pot picture off. Okay, so here's kind of a close up. So what I had made was this guy, and I'm just updating any of those that didn't see the last video on this. I made this little like one coffee pot um like toaster oven maker thing and I was kind of iffy on it from the beginning so um, I still like it I think it looks a little bit more cartoony than the rest of the piece so like I said he may still be in it but I'm not sure um, but here's the little phone I was talking about if you haven't seen that and then we got a broken little window oops I'm trying to grab stuff without looking and we got a little sink and countertop and then the tree and actually my floor has started warping which I'm okay with because that's probably what it would do anyway but you can see it's like going up and down anyway and then these are little places where I'm gonna put like um, some little uh, resin reservoirs like uh, rainwater has kind of built up wherever the tiles went away Anyway, so that's the overview of the project that I'm working on this for. And um, so yeah, I'm gonna make it just from scratch how I usually make things. I had started uh, putting all my designs into the computer and using my Cameo, my Silhouette Cameo to cut them out. And so a lot of times you guys don't see the step of me drawing it out and figuring out the dim dimensions. Of course, I drew this out beforehand because I figured that might be kind of boring, but you can kind of see the dimensions that I put on here. I'm kind of estimating by looking at the picture, and I also kind of measured against my project to make sure that it would mostly fit and not kind of take over the countertop. So what I'm using to make the body of this which I think is going to be a bit easier for me than clay. What I was saying before in my video when I made this is that I'm still new to clay and so um, this was difficult and causing me a lot of issues. So what I'm using today is my favorite mat board. And if you don't know what mat board is, it's the stuff that um, they cut out a hole out and then they put it in the frame to go around your framed artwork. So if you can't find something specifically called mat board, go into any kind of framing store and ask for the stuff that they make mats out of. <laughs> um, wow, I don't know how to say that, um, Sandra. It's Bur Burin, Washington. Happy fourth. Uh, warp floors be perfect. Yes, I like the warp floors. So it's kind of taking on a life of its own. Missouri City, Texas. Oh, next to Sugarland. Okay, I know where that is. Karen from Australia. Happy birthday. Awesome. Lots of people from Australia. Lots of Americans, Australians, someone from Finland. That's awesome. We're from all over. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is probably cut out the back piece for the coffee machine. And I've never made this before, so I might mess it up. I might, um, yeah, I might mess it up. But, you know, this is just the process that I go through that I don't really show a lot of the times because um, it's it would probably not make for a very fascinating video but that's what's great about live streaming is that you can actually see the process if you'd like to try it out for yourself so um let me find an actual pencil there we go i did try and put everything out here and then i think the lighting will get a little bit better once i take all of this white stuff off of here but right now it's like really bright on my face and like kind of dark down here but if any time you cannot see just let me know okay so we need a two inch piece by one and three quarter inch piece and so that is what i am going to start cutting out here and i'm going to try and find a side that's fairly square 
ish. And if you don't have one of these triangle things, these are like the best things to make sure that you're using right angles when you're cutting things out. I love it. So is anyone celebrating? Um, Karen's having a happy birthday. Is anyone celebrating 4th of July or any other things going on today? Actually, oh, I know, I'm celebrating, it was actually yesterday. Yesterday marks my two years, uh, two year anniversary on YouTube. So um, I didn't do anything for it. I just, I only kind of realized it a couple days beforehand, but happy two years, yay. <laughs> so hopefully many more years to come. Okay, so I'm going to mark my two inches and then mark my one and three quarter inches. One and three quarter inches. And then, thank you. Then I'm going to mark it again on this side. And the thing that, the reason I like this guy is because I can line this flat edge up to this flat edge and then I know that it is um, a 90 degree angle and I don't have to worry about that as long as I can get it lined up. Also it matters if your mat boards cut straight because sometimes they don't cut it straight. So thank you. Thank you everybody. I'm pretty excited about it and I don't I don't know if you guys noticed. I hope it wasn't that noticeable, but um, I did get monetized. It took about six months for them to monetize my channel so I can hopefully make a little bit of money to put back into some of my miniatures that I make and some of my projects. So that's exciting. I know it's kind of annoying probably for you guys to have some ads run on the videos, which they've never run before, but it's exciting for me because it helps me buy materials and it helps my family out a little bit. Not a lot right now, but um, so that was kind of exciting to um, have that happen. YouTube's apparently had like a huge backup in um, monetizing channels. And if you're not a very big channel like my channel, it'll take, it'll take a while. So I was glad, I was excited for that to happen, but sorry about the ads. I tried not to make them too annoying. So I really tried. I tried, I made sure not to put the ads that like show up on top of the video. Like I hate those ads, especially on tutorials because like it's a tutorial. You're trying to watch what they're doing. When those ads pop up, you have to stop, click off of them. So I'm not doing those kinds of ads, but anyway, sorry about the ads. But that's the business of YouTube, I guess. Okay, make sure I'm still on camera here. So this is gonna be my back piece. And I cannot find my extra blades, so hopefully this blade lasts me for two hours and doesn't need to be changed. I think I changed it recently, so. I hope, oh, thank you, Deb. Yeah, I know. It, I did make sure that they were skippable. So if you want to skip the ads, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not in YouTube for the money. It just helps a little bit. So if you're short on time and you need to skip an ad, that's all right. It's all right. <laughs> My sister was actually watching my one of my videos the other day and she saw a four minute ad. <laughs> she watched the whole thing for me. And I felt so bad. I'm like, I'm so sorry, but thank you. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, so this back piece should, whoops. How did I mess this up already? Okay, we got a two inch piece. How did I mess up already? Let's see. That's two inches. That's not two inches. What did I do? Oh, I lined it up at the edge. Okay, already messed up. But that's why you measure twice, cut once, which I already cut, but luckily I cut up, I cut too big. So. <laughs> okay, so let's 
cut this guy down. I'm gonna wanna like pull it towards me. So if I'm off the camera, as always, just tell me or let me know that you didn't see something and I'll try and redo it or explain what I did. Right now I'm just attempting to cut the right size rectangle, which apparently is a challenge today. All right. Okay. I'm ignorant of the ad part. So we watch the ad, you get money. Um, I think I'm still learning the ad thing. Um, I think it's you get paid per 30 seconds that somebody watches the ad. Um, I'm not sure, um, but jo sa Joanne says that she watches the ads if she likes the channel, and um, I, I do that also. If I really like the channel and um, really respect the person and want them to succeed, not that there's someone that I just like don't respect, but <laughs> um, if there's someone I just really like, then I will watch more of their ads, um, but yeah. But if it's someone new that I don't know, um, sometimes I will skip the ads. And then later on, if I really love them and subscribe to them, then I'll make sure and watch their ads. In proportion to the time watched. And I think that's the per 30 minutes thing, or 30, 30 minutes, that would be horrible. 30 seconds, I think you get paid per 30 seconds that's watched, so I don't know. I'm still learning. Okay, so we've got the back part, and for some reason, it's still off. My measuring skills are just not up to par. Okay, so what I've learned is this little thing does not go all the way to the edge, which I can clearly see now. I don't know why I was trusting that it went all the way to the edge, but... <sighs> it doesn't. So, but getting the measurements right the first time is super important because then everything else will be off. Frugal craft. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh no, Deb, feel better. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Marisa. I appreciate that. And please let me know if I'm saying your name right. I have a weird name, so I just always, like, I mean, if people say my name wrong, it's fine. I don't get upset. But I just really, because I have a weird-ish name, I uh, try to make sure that I am saying other people's names correctly. I just, I try. And only need a little bit, but then stuck with a ton of other things. Yes, I understand that completely and then I feel like I can't get rid of something and as soon as I do I mean it happens every time as soon as I get rid of something I need it I mean it happened just recently um, it was a literally a piece of trash and I thought I haven't used this in like a year I don't need this and I threw it away and the next day I needed it Oh, okay. So it's like Maria. You say the Z, Marisa? Marisa? <laughs> uh, oh, my name sounds Finnish. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I've heard my name has like different origins. Um, I know that Aira in um, like in Rome, the Arapaxis means altar of peace. So, um, it's like means altar. I've heard, I think in Greek it means blackbird. Um, so yeah, I didn't know. It's from, it's my grandmother's name. And I, th I think, I'm, I can't remember. I know we have Welsh, um, in our blood. We have, um, 
Welsh ancestors, uh, but I don't know if we have Finnish ancestors. In Australia, it means a bottle of wine. That's awesome. <laughs> Actually, I think I've seen that wine. I've seen Aero wine. I think I saw, or maybe my sister sent me an advertisement for it or something. Okay, I finally have cut the back of this coffee machine correctly after like eight tries. And so now I can, let's see, I need to decide. I think I want to cut the top piece separate and the bottom piece separate and then just kind of glue them on. So what I need to take into account is that this mat board is a, a 16th inch thick. So when I make my measurements, it's going to be 3 quarter inch minus a 16th inch, if that makes sense. So basically the back of my piece is right here. So this is the 16th inch that I'm taking into account, if that makes sense. Oh, thank you. Oh, it was you, Joanne. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, A-R-A. A -R -A. And I've actually met a few people named A-R-A besides my grandmother, so it's been interesting hearing their background. Um, but yeah, it was my grandmother's middle name, and it's my first name. Okay, so now I need to cut this piece. And I have this smaller piece. I need to cut, let's see. Okay, I also need to take in account a 16th inch here because I want this front piece to be all one piece. I don't want there to be a side hanging over. And if any time you don't understand what I'm saying, I'll kind of like me like show all the pieces on here. And if this is boring, y'all just tell me. This is kind of the architectural background drafting part of my brain. So um, yeah, if you're like, like move on a just let me know but um, when you're working with mat board if you decide to work with mat board it's important to know how thick your mat board is and take that into account when you're building something in 3d so okay I'm gonna not use this because I did it wrong or I was making it wrong and I'm gonna write back on here so I don't accidentally cut something out of this so I wrote back so I can remember what kind of piece it is so this is going to be a half inch high sue, and I need two of them. So I'm just gonna me measure a half inch here. Okay, um, use my, this thing, my triangle. Um, try and make it sure it goes straight. The other thing you can do is just mark another half inch, which is what I'm going to do because this is a long skinny piece. So I'm just going to mark it like this. Am I still on camera? Okay. I tend to make things go closer and closer to my face until no one else can see it. It would be easier to work in centimeters. <laughs> You're probably right, Gail. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I do um, agree that that would be easier. Uh, as an American, uh, I'm just used to inches, and especially when I'm working in 12 scale, which is based on one inch out of um, a foot, which is divided into 12 inches, I just, I use it this way. Actually, centimeters kind of blows my brain, even though like I know, I understand the concept of the metric system and it makes way more sense than our system. Um, but this is just what's ingrained in my brain. <laughs> uh, it's just whatever they tell you in school, you just go with it, you know? Okay, so this one I'm gonna do three quarter inches minus two sections of 16th inches. And you're right, that would probably make more sense uh, in centimeters. <laughs> okay, 
So three quarter inches minus two sixteenth inches, which is actually an eighth inch, which I'm sure that sounded like blah, blah, blah. But hopefully it all works out in the end. That's what we hope. And then I need two of these, so I'm gonna do that a second time. And then I will cut them out. Three quarter inches minus an eighth inch. Three quarter inch minus an eighth inch. Okay, so now I should have these two pieces ready to cut out. And hopefully I measured them decently. But I do have my trusty wood filler to fill in any of the gaps, which I usually need. It's easier to measure miniatures in millimeters as no calculations needed. It's all written on the ruler. I am too old to change now. My brain doesn't work that way. Yeah, um, I mean, they taught us the metric system in school because, I mean, that's just, you got to know it. But then it, it really doesn't make sense why we have to learn both when it would make more sense to use the metric system because it all goes into each other um, by a factor of 10. Um, I don't know. Okay. So now I should have two pieces here for the sides. Okay. So basically these should be pieces that go like this and start forming the top of the coffee maker. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, it would be interesting to like go take a class, like a miniatures class in another country and just, I think that would be the best way to learn it because then you would just see how other people's brains worked. I think that would make the most sense. Just go take a class in miniatures where they use the metric system and then you would, yeah. Because I have, I have to do like an entire project, maybe, Oh, that would be a good video. Me trying to make a miniature using the metric system. Who <laughs> would like to see that? See my brain like freeze up a hundred times before the end of it. Oh, that's a good idea. I can trace it onto, um, oops, sorry, my camera's freaking out. Sorry, camera. Trace it out onto metric paper and then I would, I would be able to see it. Okay, so this should just be two inches. Okay, that I did not cut straight. I can see that. That's okay. <laughs> uh, and the other problem would be, like, I worked in the architecture field for four years. Like, well, I mean, I went to school for it for four years. And then I worked in, like, an actual firm for four years. And everything's in inches. Everything. Feet in inches. And so it just gets ingrained in your brain over and over again. Um, so yeah, that would be hard to switch over, but if it's easier, maybe worth making the switch now, you know, might be something to try. Uh, no, my cutting board is, uh, these are half inch squares. So that's, uh, let's see, I can show you. Nope, camera, camera doesn't want to go, ah! <laughs> I'm gonna take down the whole system. I was gonna try and show you. Nope, it doesn't wanna do it. I was gonna try and show you that my mat's in, in uh, inches, but. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is a, these are half inch squares that you're seeing. I don't know, is the other side? I'm gonna check the other side. Nope, the other side's still in inches. So I guess maybe you have to order from Amazon or some other um, more European craft country, crafting, craft, European crafting company in order to get centimeters. I'm not sure. Okay, so this piece would go here and then this would go like so. And I think I'm going to go ahead and glue it on just because I'm going to start losing pieces if I don't. And it might be a little bit taller because I think I'm just gonna cut a piece to go on top of it. 
I did not take that into account. But when I make my um, my I'm trying to think my cameo files where my machine automatically cuts it, I take all of that into account. It takes it takes a good you know few hours to take everything into account, draw every single detail, take into account for the, all the thicknesses. Um, but it it's actually worth it in the end because it's a file that I can cut from over and over and over again and I don't have to remeasure it every single time so it's worth the extra time that I put in to make sure all the pieces go together making all the inches and then going back and remeasure everything in millimeters oh she was saying I could show you with the ruler oh so so I can line it up so you can see it's half inch squares. I was just gonna show you the side of my mat, but my camera is not interested in moving, which is good, because I need it to stay where it is. Our I, do, I don't know if Cameo files can be transferred into Cricut, um, which kind of scares me because I've put a lot of time into them, so I would hope so, but I'm not sure. I don't know. I've only ever had one Cameo machine and it's worked well for me um, in the time that I've had it, but it makes me scared to think that if like Cameo, if the Silhouette Company stopped making their machines and all that's left was Cricut, then maybe I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, I would lose my files. I don't know. That is not a fun thing to think about. Okay. So already it's a bit wonky. I have not been cutting straight for some reason. So I think it's because like the distance between my face, like this is a diagonal line I'm making, like 45 degree all the way down so that my camera can see it. So like my eyesight is off and so I make, I make like weird cuts when I'm not, like this is what I wanna do. And then you guys have to look at my head the whole time. And then I can make cut straight cuts or bring it back here and y'all can't see it at all. But if I do that, then the sh cuts are straight. It's just my eyes, I can't see. And I got new glasses. And so I was wanting to wear them for the live stream and then I had to mess with all my lights because all you, it was just like, it was like I had robot laser eyes because um, the lighting was just like um, shooting back into the camera off of my glasses, so. Spend a little bit of time figuring out that. <laughs> yeah, losing files is scary. I thought um, I actually had a computer go down. Um, it actually, it was a laptop that I'd done quite a few Cameo files on and it shocked me and I dropped it and then it died. So <laughs> that was sad. It was like the USB port shocked me or something. Um, but yeah. Luckily, my husband, without me knowing, had backed it up maybe like a week beforehand, and so I was very thankful, very thankful for that. He's a smart guy. There are YouTube videos showing on Google to import Cameo files. Oh, okay. Joanne says you can um, look on Google to import the Cameo files into Cricut, so that's awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm using Tacky Glue. It's my typical go-to glue for miniatures and um, it, it holds pretty pretty fast. They have the quick drying tacky glue but I haven't really used that very much. Um, I used to use it but it was just really thick and clumpy. I felt like it was more clumpy and this dries more flat if that makes any sense. Okay so this is the top of um, the machine. Let me show you the picture again. So it would be sitting like that. So I'm gonna have to put a top on it. And then um, I'm gonna lay say that to last because I'm gonna try and put the center down the middle, that wooden, like fake wood type center. So now I'm gonna build this bottom part here next. Okay, so let's look at our measurements on that guy. Um, let's see, I'm not using that to measure anymore. 
I realized. Oh, he's three eighths thick. So I gotta think. Um, I guess I'm just gonna add another sixteenth inch onto the bottom because I'm just gonna put a bottom over the whole bottom part of it. That's just easier. It's gonna make it a little bit taller. And then the lid's gonna be up here. Oh, but I'm all for making it easy today. Yes. Yeah, um, I actually have tried to um, switch out tacky glue for Elmer's glue at one point, and it was not, it didn't work as well. So definitely there's something in tacky glue that is a step above Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue is still good, and I've still used it in the past, but tacky glue just works better for some reason. So definitely recommend. And you can get it in most craft shows, craft sh shows, stores. Um, and apparently Aileen, whose name is on here, I think it was one of my live streams, someone was talking about Aileen is an actual person and like she came up with the formula for this glue. So that's really cool. She's actual crafter. Okay, so now I need to make some 3 8 inch strips. Basically, I'm going to do it the same way that I did this top part. It's just going to be thinner for the bottom part. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the picture off here. Um, you, you may be able to find it at a hardware store. I've never actually looked for it there, but um, I, most craft shits. Craft. I keep saying craft show. Craft store should have it, I think. Well, I don't know. Maybe a craft show would have it too. Um, I'm actually doing a craft show coming up. Just signed up for it. I, uh, when I'm not working on miniatures, I take um, nutcrackers that have broken and then I fix them and repaint them and then resell them. So I do that with my sister. I think she's on here somewhere. She was watching on here somewhere. Um, she uh, she crochets, and so we do the craft show thing together. And it's awesome because even if we don't really sell much, we just get to sit and like talk and stuff. So we enjoy it. Maybe that's why I keep saying craft show instead of craft store. Although I could be tired. Okay, um, oh, I also need to mark out, so it's gonna be the same length, so it's the three quarter inch minus an eighth inch thing again, which was probably confusing the first time I said it, but just to make it the same as the first one, so three quarter inch minus an eighth inch, and then three quarter inch minus an eighth inch, and then the rest of it should be two inches like so so that should be it oh okay you can also order it online amazon.com I was looking on there today um, we spent the day hanging stuff up in our house and I know I'm sorry someone probably just cringed that I didn't use a ruler to mark those but honestly my cuts on this are so off that I'm not even worried about it anymore plus I'm gonna age it so um, but we spent the day um, hanging stuff up around the house we've only lived here for a year and uh, the only things we hung up we just hung up on the um, nails that were from the previous owner so today I actually took some stuff down and put some new um, nails and screws up to hang up some stuff. So um, that was fun, but it's also kind of tiring. And then made my husband move a bunch of furniture around the house, but he did it with a happy, happy heart. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut this guy. Still, I think, I don't think I'm cutting it straight, but, oh well. All right. 
Now this part is going to be down here and it should be the same length as this guy. Yep. So he's going to be down here making the bottom part of the coffee maker. I'm, I think it's a bun coffee maker. B-U-N-N. -N. I kind of want to make the little tag and then like age it like it's worn off over time. But we'll see what I have time for tonight. This is going to be my typical two hour stream. I've already done about 40 minutes. Wow, that went by fast. Um, but hopefully we'll at least get it built. I definitely won't get to any coffee pots today. And if I do, I don't know, I'm going to have to research how I want to do that. Especially if, like, I want to go with, um, who said the broken coffee pots? Um, that was a good idea. I just, I'm not quite sure how to do that. I have to find, like, because I don't know how to make, like, an empty resin sphere. <laughs> yes, Mary, that's why I love aging things, because wonky is okay. It saves me so many times. So, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Well, my sister's taunting me with the resin. If I did resin, I would have to figure out how to make it hollow. Um, like hollow, like empty in the inside. So that I could make it look like it was cracked. But resin, I don't know how to do that. Anyone, any ideas on like, like how to make an empty sphere? I don't know, I've never done that before. Oops, <clears throat> just broke it. Sorry, y'all can't see. Okay, so here's the bottom piece and the top piece. So now I'm going to put kind of like a flat piece on top of here. And I am just going to I don't know. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and make the base so that I know that this is strong and not breaking. That's a good idea. I'm going to make the base. Glass blown. Do you know how to... That's my sister. <laughs> Do you know how to blow glass? Because I would love for you to uh, make those for me. <laughs> Buy a pretty glass jug from Japan and break it. Mm, I could do that. I ha could. I just have to look and see if they had a shape that was very similar to the the coffee pot shape. Maybe just break off the entire top half. Maybe. Ugh. I am doing this the lazy way, and it is not paying off. Okay. 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 We're just gonna cut it out. We're gonna use our measurements and do it the not lazy way. Okay, so it should be two inches by three quarter inches. All right, we're gonna measure it and not do it the lazy way, which is usually the better way. Three quarter inch, three quarter inch, two inches. Okay, two inches, use this guy. So I think the um, next live stream, I'll invite my sister and she can all show us how to make blown glass coffee pots. I think that would be awesome. Some fake broken glass with a piece of broken glass with a handle on it. Oh, that's a good idea. Just get some, make it look like it. But then, like, I could do what um, Joanne said because she, um, she actually sent me a website that had, like, blown glass pieces already made. 
And so, you know, I can just get one that's um, the same shape and then just kind of place a coffee mug handle or something like that. Okay, this is gonna be the base, hopefully, if I measured it right. Please fit, please fit. Okay, it fits. That was way easier than just trying to trace it. Or probably not easier, more precise, probably. Because it's so thin, it's really delicate, so I need to get this base on here so it won't break. Let's see, what about an empty test tube or pipette for the glass part? I'm reading and not watching what I'm gluing here. Um, if you heat up pipette a little bit, you could probably shape the bottom better and then cut. Ooh, Mary, you're gonna, you're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, heat up a pipette and break it. Oh my goodness. That sounds scary. <laughs> made me laugh <coughs> it's a good idea but um, I'm a little accident prone um, I might need some kind of supervision <laughs> in order to do that oh they're plastic oh, okay <laughs> that might be a bit easier okay so I guess you buy the the Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I know what you're saying about the pipettes. The little ones with the squeezy things. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe I just need to get some pipettes and start, like, experimenting with them. Good idea. I thought you were going to have me melting glass. Oh, my. I would definitely hurt myself. And I would not put that on. I would not want to put that on YouTube because... Someone else might do it too. Okay. Um, we've got the base part here. And now I am going to trace. I'm going to line this up because I'm going to put it the, the uh, base of my coffee maker here. I'm going to trace it. Here we go. Okay, so this should be the base of my coffee maker. <laughs> my sister's gonna help. <laughs> she can supervise. She's younger than me, but she's in many ways older than me. <laughs> She'll make sure I don't hurt myself. this guy on here oh sugar charm shop has um a uh i love sugar charm shop i'll have to look that up <laughs> carlin you've got a lot of jobs going on now that's what happens when you start being sassy on my live stream you're gonna get jobs Okay, so I'm gonna put this piece in. Now I'm not even on camera here. So here's the bottom of my coffee pot holder. And it's thicker now because I didn't take into account for the top and bottom pieces, but that's okay. We're just, I'm just gonna go with the flow. I don't know if y'all saw, but um, Sugar Charm Shop, um, she said she's not gonna be doing miniatures on her channel anymore. <laughs> Made me very sad. I guess you can still follow her on Instagram and see the miniatures that she's making and then you can go to her website and um, purchase the tutorials which with her amount of talent I know is probably worth it um, but I'm kind of sad that she's not doing miniatures on her channel anymore <laughs> Carly hi only in my dreams welcome to the uh, live stream we are making a coffee pot and anybody else who's join us join joining us well not a coffee pot I'm making a coffee maker and discussing how to make um 
coffee pots. So this is what I've got so far. Um, I think I'm going to make the inside piece now so that I can kind of slide that in. And I might have to look up like 70s wood, 70s wood texture and like print it out or something. It's like popping up on the end. Okay, so we got that guy. We need, I know she's super talented. <laughs> Uh, she's, she just amazes me with the stuff she makes. Like she made, um, I like I have like a Polly Pocket collection. So like I watched when she made her miniature Polly Pockets, like extremely tiny. Oh man, that is, I don't know how she did that. That was crazy. Okay, so now I need to make the inside piece, which is about a half inch wide. And kind of need to measure half inch wide this way. And then I need to figure out how deep this needs to be. Um, let's see, probably, uh, I think it needs to be, I don't know. Maybe it's the three quarter. Yeah, it's the three quarter minus the eighth inch again. That crazy measurement that keeps coming back around. Okay, so I'm gonna do the half inch piece. I think I'm getting crowded by all my stuff again. Okay. I clean off my desk and then it all just slowly appears again. Gonna make a long, no, I don't think I need that much of a half inch piece because the other sides are not that big. Okay, so now I can stick this in here and kinda decide where I wanna cut, cut it off. Oops, y'all can't even see. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this Cut this off about here. Huge number of children who complain constantly about things being too hard for them to make. That's sad. Man, what a bummer, because she's so, like, I wish she would keep making miniatures. It was just amazing, the stuff she can make. She can make. I can't imagine anyone complaining about any of her videos, but... Oh well. Okay. So this piece kind of goes in this slot. Oh, I'm like, where'd my picture go? I turned it off. Okay. So this piece kind of goes in here like so. So I need to make the side pieces that go around. So they're actually going to be even 1 16th inch smaller. Sorry for all the little measurements. I'm sure it's confusing. I hope it's not confusing. But I even confused myself, so I can't imagine I'm making that much sense right now. I'm going to cut off this piece so I have a straight edge again. have assumed that most of her followers were adults too but I guess not so I know she's doing a lot of um, doll doll remakes right now which are super cute I'm still watching her stuff because she still does amazing things um, I'm just sad there's no miniatures 16th inch okay quarter inch minus an eighth minus an eighth. 16th inch. Three quarters minus an eighth minus a sixteenth. Okay. All right. 
make two sides of these and make them the same length as this guy. So that's why so much. Yeah, I've seen some of her videos where she's been frustrated. Poor thing. I hope I don't get to that point. Um, I really hope. I hope I don't get frustrated. I'm having a lot of fun right now, so. I don't know. I feel like, I feel it's super sad when um, artists are sharing their work and sharing things and then people are just being down on it. it makes me sad. So, I wish her all the luck. Okay. Okay. Now I'm cutting the sides of that wood center piece. Trying to make a straight line. Sorry if you're seeing my head in the way. It's just going to happen if we're going to get straight lines. For a second there, it looked like I had blue nail polish, which I know I don't have blue nail polish, but I don't. I don't know what I was looking at. Okay. So now this piece should go like this and this piece like this should go. This should work. All right. Nope, it's not straight. Not even close. That's why we have wood filler to make our <laughs> stuff look like it's straighter. That's okay. That's okay. Whenever you're frustrated with your miniatures, just say that's okay. Yes, I agree. She's very talented. Papers get thrown in the trash over and over again, get criticized for something as simple as soldering. Is that what she was getting criticized for? I haven't soldered in my life. Have I? Maybe in school I did once. Maybe. My husband does, so he can maybe show me. I want to learn how to. Um, so, maybe someday. Can y'all still hear me? I just realized I'm getting quieter and further away from the microphone. And this microphone does not care to pick up my voice. I have not started hearing any fireworks yet, so... I don't know if we're like too far away from where they're allowed. I don't know if they're allowed. I don't know. Obviously, because I'm not a firework fan, not haven't looked into that. Okay, so now we have the center thing. I do feel like I need to wrap it or paint it before I glue it in. Um, yeah, needs to scoot over a little bit. So there's that piece. And then I think the only other pieces left is there's like a little piece that goes right here and then over here. And I think that's the bulk of like the body of the machine. And then there's some buttons and then some top pieces. Okay, so the fireworks are already starting in Houston. It's not too wet for them to be lighting fireworks. I guess it's good that it's kind of wet outside so that doesn't, nothing catches on fire. Okay, I've never looked anything up on Google before while live streaming, so hopefully this doesn't cause problems. Okay. Hopefully, let me know. Hopefully, <laughs> nothing goes away. Um, okay, so I'm going to look up 70s wood paneling. Oh, we'll look up that. 
No, that's not exactly it. Um, 70s wood um, wall paper. Mm, maybe that. I don't know. I know y'all can't see what I'm looking at right now. She invested in mini power tools to make better miniatures, even soldering garden furniture out of wire. They complained despite being told they could use super glue instead. Man, that's a bummer. Oh, look up teak. Okay, I'll try that. Teak. Oh, let's see. Teak pattern. Teak pattern. Oh. I didn't spell pattern right. That's a problem. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Let's see, which one do I want? Ooh, that one looks good. Okay, so save as this one. Can y'all see my computer screen? I don't really know what y'all can see. <laughs> um, okay, so now let's open this. And let's print this and see if we can use it um, for the coffee thing. How big do I need to make it? Big enough to cover that. Okay, I think that should work. All right. Very simple. Okay. Okay, should be printing out now. So. I know, I'm surprised that I haven't gotten any complaints um, using my Cameo because that's not a machine everybody has. Um, but I guess I just really use it to cut the pieces out. I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm also not, I also don't have um, a uh, million followers, so that makes a difference. There's not as many opinions, but um, I haven't got as many. I haven't gotten any complaints. I've gotten a lot of requests for people wanting my cameo files, which I told them I would try and work on this um, this summer, but I haven't done it yet. Okay, so this is what I found. Oops, I'll show it here. So I think that's pretty close. And that was looking up the teak, so thank you for that. So we're gonna cover this with this before we glue it in. I think it's a good match. So now I just gotta get it on there without it bubbling up. So probably wanna do it. Okay, so I'm gonna fold it to make a really nice edge. And I gotta fold it again. There. Thank you, white line. Oh, you just you just bought a miniature table saw. That's awesome. I have a miniature table saw, but I kind of have a fear of power tools. I don't really use it all that much. I need to. But my husband, knowing my fear, also got me some like saw proof gloves. I guess they protect your fingers or something. So Okay, so I cut that or I folded it. Now I'm just gonna, let's see, I'm gonna put it up to the edge. Maybe I should glue it first. I think I'll glue it first and then I'll cut it. glue everywhere and then I'm gonna kind of even it out this may not be the best glue etiquette but we're just winging it tonight winging it I really didn't know what I was gonna make until like about an hour before the stream I was gonna work on my resin project with the bald mermaid if you watched that but I just couldn't just couldn't get up the the will to work on it right now so 
Oops, I don't think that's gonna work. Maybe I didn't fold this very good. Oh well, we'll make that the top. Okay. I'm scared of the scroll saw, but I love my bandsaw. <laughs> Okay, well luckily, it's gonna be kind of inside the machine. So I think that looks pretty good. Let's see, scissors. Glue everywhere, scissors, okay. Um, well good thing I'm gonna age this because this, I did not do a good job on this. But we're just gonna go with it today. Uh, it doesn't matter if it bubbles, it's supposed to be old and creepy. True. And it is supposed to be kind of like laminate. Um, why would someone complain about someone making. T yeah, I didn't. That's frustrating. I understand why she's frustrated about that. You're just trying to do your best, your best job and, you know, work hard and improve your skills and you're sharing like her amazing talent with everybody and people are complaining. That's sad. Love all my tools. <laughs> I need to, uh, I need to get less scared of my tools, I think. Okay. Let's put this guy in here and see how it's doing, how it's looking. That's not straight. I think I think I'm gonna have to put it this way, like so. And then I'm just gonna have to age down here to cover up where I accidentally didn't glue it correctly. Yeah. But I like that. I think that looks just like it. Pretty close. Okay. <laughs> I always gotta try for perfection. Doesn't happen very often. You gotta try, right? Okay, so um, I'm gonna glue this in and then just hopefully do a good job painting around it. But like you said, it's weathered. So I knew what you meant. I knew you meant weathered. Glue this guy in, put glue on the back here. Okay. Get this in here and try and get it as straight as possible. I'm getting glue all over it. It's okay, it'll add to the texture. Get it somewhat straight. Sometimes I can see it better whether it's straight or not on the camera. It looks okay. Okay, what time is it? Okay, we still got about 50 minutes or so. If I don't finish it, I'll probably um, video the rest of it and then put it on the end of this. <laughs> I call myself um, a lazy perfectionist because I do want it to be perfect, but in the easiest way possible. <laughs> I don't want to go out of my way to make it perfect. I just want it to be, to be done. <laughs> what do you, oh, do you want for nothing your money back? Oh, I see. Okay. I got what you're saying. <laughs> Um, adults get it. Kids who are attracted to kawaii stuff. Yep. Yep. There's so many channels on kawaii stuff, though. Ugh. Okay. I have opinions, but anyway. All right. So the next thing I think I need to do are these side pieces. And I'm just going to measure these. These are going to be some pieces where I need to put the wood filler in, I think. Let's see. Can I make them out of these? Nope. Um, I think I'm just going to cut some 3 8 inch strips. I am going to do the metal with um, paint. Um, I'm going to 
What I've done in the past is I've used, sorry, I keep picking glue off my hands. Um, I've used wood filler, no, wood glue to do like a layer on top of the paper. And when it dries, it gives it a very metallic-y finish once you paint it, if that makes sense. Um, if you watch my Iron Maiden video where I make an Iron Maiden out of paper towels, I use a lot of wood glue and that kind of gives it a metallic finish. Or the sink, um, the sink that I made for the abandoned coffee shop. That one I use the wood glue also. Um, ruler, 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 there's a ruler. Okay, so 3 8 inch, no, no, 3 three sixteenth inch. I wrote three eighths. Is it three eighths? Nope, it's three sixteenths. I wrote it down wrong. Uh, mini lathe. I know it would be so amazing to have a mini lathe. Like I would love for it to be the size that fits on my desk. Does anyone have a mini lathe? Does it like I, I've seen a real lathe and it's huge and I want like little bitty ones that fit on my desk and are quiet. Like I'd love to have power tools that are quiet. I think that's the main thing. It's probably why I'm also not like a firework fan is the noise. I just, I can't handle it. Can't handle it. I think if power tools were quiet, they would be much less scary to me. I think it's like an anxiety thing. Like just the sound of them starting up gives me anxiety. Thank you, Joanne. <laughs> I, um, I really like the Iron Maiden, but my paper hinges, like they have had to be re-glued several times. So I may do like a re- a redesign of my paper hinges at some point. Um, I could have put that in my miniature fails video, but didn't really fail, just need to be re-glued. But I like to have make, make things once and then, then be fine forever. That's my goal. They need to be made once, fine forever. <laughs> they make smaller ones. Oh, okay. I need to look into that. Cause I think it'd be awesome if I could make my own table legs and stuff. Cause they have like the, I've made them out of the chair, not chair, stairwell spindles or um, chair, no, stair. Cannot do words today. What are they called? Ballasts? Stair ballasts? Whatever they're called. They have packages of those at Hobby Lobby and I've made legs out of those. But then all the legs end up looking the same because they're made out of the same thing. Okay, come on now. I know you fit in there. Okay, so there's a side piece. So all this I'll fill in with wood filler and it'll look like one piece. Ballasters. That's what I was thinking. Is that what I said? I can't remember. I said ballasts. That's what I said, I think. What are ballasts? That's a thing. I don't know what they are though. It's another kind of glue I have to find a finish equivalent for. The wood glue, this is, um, there's an Elmer's brand, um, but um, yeah, this is just uh, water soluble wood glue. And this is this, this is this brand I've liked a lot. So, all right, get this stuff in here. Kind of get some of it off. Put this guy in. Push him back. Okay. Could you use, you could use a drill for a lathe? I don't. You'd have to have a pretty steady hand or something clamping it down, like really hurt, really like steady, like a huge clamp. I've never heard of that. That would be interesting to see. Okay, so we've got a side piece. I'm gonna do the other side piece over here. And 
and cut this guy off. All right, get some glue in here. What I have yet to find is a really great glue applicator with like a really small nib or nozzle. Okay, I cut that too small. Try again. Um, because I've tried that before, but the nozzle always gets clogged. It's like a syringe type or like a squeezy bottle with like a syringe on the end and it gets clogged or what I've happened had the most had had happened the most is that it's a metal nib and then I guess because it's a water soluble glue it um, rusts so I cut it too small again and now I'm out of pieces okay <sighs> cut another piece <laughs> well, if anyone tries the drill lathe thing, let us know. Let us know how you did it and if it worked. I guess you'd also have to have like really tiny chisels. I actually have a set of chisels, um, but I've never used them. Okay. All right, it's taking forever just to do this side. Um, if you smooth all the glue off, will it add to the weathered look uh, like paint that's rusted off extra texture for the weathering? Um, oh, if I don't smooth all the glue off, I got you. Uh, yeah, um, actually probably that would be an easier step to do with the wood glue because the wood glue actually holds its 3D shape better. Um, the tacky glue I find dries really flat, so even if you kind of make a mound of it, it flattens out a lot. But um, the wood glue actually holds its shape a little bit better, so that's a better um, technique to do with the wood glue. Okay, now I'm not going to cut this too small. I think I just heard my dog bark. If anything, I'm going to cut it too big, and then I'm going to have to cut a piece off. That's the plan. No! Mm. Okay, let's see if it worked. Okay. Whew. I thought I cut it too small again at the last minute. Okay, cutting it down slowly, slowly. Found some glue applicators, at, but they clog up. Yeah, I need like a perfect glue applicator. Doesn't rust, doesn't seize up. Okay, that piece fits finally after what, 10 minutes and I'm about to throw it and lose it. Throw it, throw and lose the piece, not throw and lose my mind. <laughs> I'm not that tired yet. <laughs> that was a really weird noise. I'm sorry. I don't know if y'all could hear that. I don't know what that was. Okay. Lots of icky glue spots, but that's okay. It's going to be all covered up. All right. So the body of this guy is pretty much done. Um, like the main body part. Obviously, like there would be pieces under here. So I don't know if I should try and cut those now or show you guys. Let's see, we still got 40 minutes. I could probably get those cut. Let's see, how do I wanna do that? Just like that, maybe put those in there. If there's any gaps, we'll just, we'll just go with it. Okay like so my very professional measuring uh, process here my 
architecture professor would have a fit. That's okay. I liked most of them. I didn't like the last one that I had. So that's okay. All right. Mm. Is this going to work? Kind of. I'll put it further up. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Now I'm going to cut a second one. Sorry, y'all can't see again. No. Ah, okay. My blade's going out again, and I cannot find my replacements. Oh, well. Okay. Get these guys in there, and then I think I can put the top on and start putting wood filler in. And then we'll get closer to having some kind of completed... Oh, I need to make like the little burner pieces. Um, um, it's all sorts of weird noises happening right now. But still, no firework sounds. Okay, so I just kind of popped that piece in there. It's not perfect, but I'm okay with it. And then I think before I put it all together, we'll stick it into the project and we'll kind of see how it looks on the um, countertop, just so you can see the scale, so that I can see the scale, make sure it's something I want to uh, finish and keep in the project. So, that guy in there. Ugh, everything's sticking. I would use snap parts to make the coffee warmers. Snap parts. You mean like uh, button snaps, like for clothing? I'd have to be probably um, pretty big snap. Do they make? I'm. Do they make like bigger ones? Like. Well, no, I guess it's not that big. Be maybe a half inch round. That would be a snap size. That's a good idea. I like that. Have to go to, to a craft store and look at the snap parts. The snap, snap, <laughs> the snap section or the button section. The findings, that's what they're called. Okay, so we got those little pieces in there. And then we just need the top. And then we can do the wood filler part. And then the wood glue. So I need two inches by three and a quarter inch. Three and a quarter. Three quarter. Not three and a quarter, three quarter inch. Okay, still on the camera, good news. Make it two inches wide. Okay, and then do two inches down here. And, okay. Does this look like it fits? Yes, okay. This guy. Okay. We know what would have been appropriate is for me to actually drink some coffee while doing this. Sounds good, actually. Black or silver. It's a good idea. Fabric store will have different sizes. Hmm. Love how you measure with your ruler and cut tag, like completely ignoring the measurement. <laughs> yeah, the, pretty much the cutting mat is here for cutting and not much else. Um, yeah, so I've never been good at that. 
Okay, so this guy goes on here, or do I want to do it like that? That fits a bit better, I think. I'm gonna have to go look. I really like that idea. I've never thought of using snaps as burners, but I think that would probably be a lot more detailed and better looking than anything I could make. And I could even kind of the rust process that I did on my little um, toaster oven guy, I can do that on the snap parts and make it look all rusted up. Aw, oh, man. Where do you, tell me again where you live, White Line. <laughs> Actually, my mother-in-law sews, but she doesn't do a lot of clothing. I wonder if she has any snap parts. Man, that looks nasty. That's just all the glue gunk from my fingertips. My sister's got, may have some snaps. My sister has the hugest button collection in the state of Texas, probably. So maybe she's got some snaps. But she also does not sew clothes. <laughs> okay, so there's our our coffee body here. Um, I think I need to put a little bit more glue on this side. Not perfect, but that's okay. Okay, so now, ugh, this is another reason why I can't do clay because my hand, fingers are just always, always dirty. Always. And I think it's my mat, like I clean it, but not well enough, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this wood filler and I guess I also have the Elmer's brand wood filler. Um, I like to use it in this because I had like the tubs of it, but they it dried out really quickly. And so here it just, um, whatever you take out of the nozzle is the only part that comes out into the air. Um, as long as I can open this up. That part dried. Um, well, let's see. I'm in Brownwood, will be in Houston, Palestine, also Keller next week. Wow. I will be in Keller in September because there is a miniatures um, meeting thing happening there. So I will be in Keller then. Um, okay, maybe this isn't going to work. Let's see if I have something a little bit longer that will stick in. Let's try a paper clip. Is your name Phyllis? I'm guessing. Okay. Come on. I made all these nice claims about how using this type of wood filler keeps it from drying out, and now it's all dried out in here. And this is why my mat's probably all messy, because I just let stuff fall everywhere. <sighs> okay. It's coming out now. Yeah, there's, um, it's the Society of American Miniaturists. They do, um, you have to be a member, I found out. You have to be a member to um, to go to the weekend. But it's like a $25 subscription for like a year. Um, so it's like, it's not really a subscription, membership fee. And then they have something called the Wonderful Workshop Weekend. And you get to go make miniatures all weekend long. So it's really fun. Yes, it is a little bit easier. <laughs> um, okay, so right now I'm just gonna put some wood filler around the edges and that's to make it look like anywhere that I messed up or my joints weren't 
fitting together. It's going to make it look smoother and more like one piece of metal. And it's like really dried out. So maybe this is just, this stuff is just past its prime now. I don't know. I can't win apparently with my wood filler. Although I know um, Angela, I don't think she's here. Um, she uh, told me just to add some water to my bucket of wood filler and it would kind of, like after each time you use it, add um, like a, like add some water into the bucket before you put the lid on. And then like the next time you use it, it should be fine. But I can't put water in here, so. I guess there's pros and cons to each each type of material you choose to use. So apparently I made lots of mistakes on this side, but it's okay if it looks a little dented in because it's old and messed up. So I'll let that. Yeah, it's in Colleen. Oh, is it in Colleen? Sorry. I get Colleen and Keller mixed up. It's in Killeen. That's not even close to Keller. Maybe it's closer to where you are. <laughs> it's in Killeen. Thanks, Carlin. Um, yes, it's in Killeen during in, um, September. And then the other thing they do is they call it the birthday party. And you can actually go for free and uh, it, um, but I am, again, you have to be a, uh, member of the, sorry, I'm not, I'm off screen again, member of the group and you get a free gift bag with miniatures made, um, by all sorts of different artists in the area. And then, um, you get a project and then you put the project together while you're there. And so it's just a big, a uh, bunch of miniatures getting together and working and I've only been to one, but it was really, really fun. I hope it works for you, Phyllis. Uh, let me know if it does. I actually threw my bucket out before the I got the tip from Angela. So if it works for you, I'm glad I could help save your, or that Angela could help save your bucket of wood filler. Because that stuff's expensive and it's frustrating that you don't get to use all of it most of the time. I'm just using a ton of it today. But um, oh, let me show you. I can show you actually. Yeah, it's up there. I can show you what I made at the first birthday party thing. Oh. Okay. It's not finished, of course, which is the theme of my projects. Um, but it's a uh, it's supposed to be a like a porch. And the theme was called Grandma's Porch. And so all it is is this front part. And um, it came with like columns and stuff. So I did the, the um, inside. Oh, the columns are inside. But you could, you could put like a little something on the inside because there's a little bit of space in there. And then um, like you got the siding and you got the door and the windows. And so you could just kind of do what you wanted to to it. So I really enjoyed that. I hope to make another one again. Because um, the projects are really fun. You don't typically finish it, like as you saw, while you're there. But um, if you know what it is, you can come with prepared with stuff. And come kind of come prepared with an idea and get a jump start. And it's just fun to work alongside other miniaturists and... I didn't really know anyone the first time I went, um, but I think it's more fun to go when you know people. Um, I might, I don't, it wasn't my design, but um, I might still have like the dimensions. I don't know. I can ask somebody if it's okay for me to share the actual like dimensions and stuff because that would be a fun it was e I mean it's just foam board honestly put together so um it's it was a really cute 
design and idea by whoever was in charge of it. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna do is this front part right here. Like so. Oh, I told you we were gonna put it in the project, so we'll do that. So you can kind of see the scale of it. Hmm. I really could use some coffee right now. If my husband's watching, I could use some coffee right now. Okay. All right, so have this so far. Let's put it into the project. Let me put the lid on this. Find my wipes to clean up my area. Real oh, quick. You have to do a porch like your grandmother's with a ringer washer trying to figure out how to make one. I've seen, um, if I'm thinking of the right machine, I've seen some ringer washers like mass produced, I think, like not mass, but like professionally produced by companies. Um, but I don't know if there's not a tutorial out there, I'd be surprised if someone hasn't tried to do it. Okay. Get that all cleaned up. Okay, so let's put it in here and check out the size. All right, so here's the little thing. And here is the coffee machine. Oh, it's big. It's big. Okay, what do y'all think? Is it too big? Hmm. Mm hmm. It's definitely too big for over here. I don't know. Maybe putting a coffee machine in here is hopeless. <laughs> I thought I had a, the dimensions figured out. But I mean, I honestly think this is how big it would probably be. I don't know. I mean, maybe I could remove this shelf and maybe it wouldn't look so like squished in there. Like take this shelf out. But I don't know. I mean, I think it's the right, put it on another shelf. Oh yeah, I don't think it's gonna fit over there. No. I mean, I could have like another little table like over here, but I do want to put like a, um, like a coffee counter or something. So I could put like a little table here, like just like a little bit lower. Like this is our little work table. Okay, let's see what y'all are saying. Um, looks good. Put on another shelf. Too big to put on the shelf, but you like it. It's the right size. A bit big, but possibly painting it darker color might make it look better. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I need to make like just a little extra table that goes right here. Let me lay it down. Kind of move my light a little bit. So it sits just like a little bit lower. Or should it sit higher? Red lights, so that's their stand for the coffee. I like that because then I could put the plug down there. You could see the plug kind of hanging out of the socket. I think it'd look okay there. What do y'all think? I'm kind of liking that idea. I'll just have to be careful when I make my display case 
not to cramp its style. Okay, let me go grab some uh, sandpaper just to sand this down. Actually, hold on. Because it's still fairly not dry, I'm just going to use paper towel. Um, paper towel is a really fine, fine grit sandpaper, so if you're scared of like um, scuffing something up too much, you can start with paper towel. The uh, wood glue will also help a little bit. On a little stand, lower, a stand with a coffee maker on it with shells over top, hold like coffee and cups. Okay. I think I think um, the putting it on an extra little stand is a good idea. I like that idea. Kind of give it its own little moment because it would be kind of the center of the coffee shop would be this guy. Okay. So the heart of a coffee shop is the coffee. I guess my husband's not watching because he didn't make me any. Yeah, you can post a link for sure. Um, stay in the coffee room. I tend to place a 12 scale doll to check how things are looking together. It would look good on a tea trolley, but maybe we just pretend nobody steals anything and it's not nailed down. Um, yeah, I, um, I still really want to kind of think through the story of this place. Like, was it like a, um, I don't know, like a natural disaster type of thing and everybody just fled without trying to loot places? Or was it a place that was looted? What would be stolen? What would still be there? Did someone try to live there for a little bit? Like, I want to kind of think through the story. I just haven't had time to sit down and decide what is the story of the coffee shop. If y'all have any ideas, let me know. Cause, um, I mean, I just started making it and then realized I don't know what happened here. It just existed. Okay. Um, I'm going to do, let's see, do I want to do the wood glue? Cause that's going to take a while to dry. My wood glue cap broke. So now it just comes out completely. It doesn't open anymore. There we go. So I just have to put it in here. Hopefully it's not all dried out. Okay. So I usually put the wood glue on with um, my finger. It's probably a more um, dignified way to do that, but um, that's how I do it. So your fingers are your greatest tools. And then I just put it on here. And if you put it on thick enough, it kind of levels itself out, which is what gives it the uh, more of a metallic finish than just being plain paper. I may have to do kind of the top half and then the bottom half so I can hold on to it. Although I guess I could hold on to this center section. Aha, a handle. Winding silicone tape around the opening. Oh, that's smart. I just kind of shoved the cap back on there and hoped I didn't glue it into place. Um, but it really, it broke last time I used it, so I'm glad it opened because I don't really have a backup glue. But putting the tape on it is smart. Now I'm just kind of getting it, globbing it on there. Um, Mary, I don't know if you heard me, but it's definitely okay to post the link if you found a tutorial. I really don't mind if y'all post links to other videos because I'd rather like us learn from each other. I'm not like 
only watch my videos because I don't only watch my videos. I watched everybody else's too. And I love finding new uh, miniature artists. So definitely if you have something to post, please do. Just make sure it's appropriate. Okay, so I got three, four, three sides. Get this side. And last time I tried to rush drying the glue, it got all wrinkly, so I'm not gonna try and rush it. I'm just gonna let it kind of dry on its own, which means I may not, well, I probably won't be able to paint it for you guys tonight. But I may go, um, like search for some of those um, snap pieces like y'all were talking about and um, like try and finish it before I repost the live stream on Friday. And then I don't know if I'll have time to make a like a stand for it before Friday. Maybe I could find one that I just have saved for a random project and see if that works just to kind of test what it looks like. I can try and do that. Okay. There's a certain point where I need to stop touching it or else it's just gonna look bad. But don't always know when that point is. So I'm gonna stop right there. I think I can put it on its back. I don't know. Yep, I shouldn't have touched it. I'm just gonna put it right there to chill out. Okay, um, what should we do in the meantime? I don't, I've got about 12 minutes left. I wanna show you and get your opinion. Um, I've been making things, like I said, I'm going to, is it Killeen? Killeen. I'm going to Killeen in September and um, it's gonna be my first time to have a miniatures table with stuff for sale. So I've been making things for sale and some of you might know that I have an Etsy store. So I've been going back and forth on should I put these things in my Etsy store and then possibly have nothing in September or should I wait till September to have stuff on my table and then maybe not sell them? I don't know. But let me show you what I've been working on. Um, so you might, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen uh, these little guys. I've been making um, little recycle bins. And I made these little uh, milk jugs out of hot glue. So I made a mold and then just stuck the hot glue in there. And I think it made like a really well looking um, milk jug. And then I made these other, the only thing I'm not super happy with is the little soda can, but that's why I kind of covered him up with junk mail so that you couldn't see him very well. And I put some cardboard in there and some newspapers and like little uh, baking soda, that's what they're called. So yeah, that's what I've been making. Um, and I was thinking about making some of these things individually so people could buy them individually. Um, and then I made uh, these little guys separate so people could um, buy them if they just if they wanted an empty recycle bin. Like I said, I don't know if I should put these in my Etsy store and then not have them in September or should I save them or should I just put a few? I don't know. I'm, I'm conflicted because I have five filled recycle bins and four not filled recycle bins. And then I've been making a lot of these uh, little cardboard boxes. And I think I wanna fill them with some stuff. If y'all have any suggestions of what I could fill them with. I was thinking about filling them with some like old photographs. And so I was printing these out and I'll show you what that looks like. But if you have any other ideas, I was thinking maybe like rolled up paper, um, like scrolls or something. Um, I don't know, but kind of have these like old photographs in here, um, kind of like so, 
I don't know, but I think if I was buying this, I wouldn't want the photographs like glued in because I might want to take them out. I don't know. Uh, packing peanuts, that's good. How do you make packing peanuts? I would have to think through that. Hmm. I guess you could make them out of like real foam, just like cut up the foam real small. Um, the milk, yeah, the milk jug. I don't know if I don't have my. Here, I'll show you. This is my little thing of uh, molds. So what I did was I made this piece out of polymer clay. So it looks like this. Then I made a mold out of it and I probably should have made a mold of it lying down. But I made a mold out of it so that when I took it off it looks like this. Then I took hot glue and then I shoved hot glue in this side and this side and I have markings on the side so I know when it's put together correctly. And then I have this little vent where it like comes out the side if I have extra hot glue. And then I just leave it in there for, I don't know, five minutes or so. And then when it comes out, I just pull it out and then I just have to cut the little extra, um, extra hot glue parts off. So that's how I made the hot glue milk jugs and then just print it off little label like so. Oh, vinyl records is a good idea. Yeah, I could make packing peanuts out of polymer clay. I'd want to figure out how to do that quickly. Maybe make a, um, let's come out some kind of mold, <laughs> small styrofoam balls that would work too. I'd have to glue those down because those things are sticky. Anyway, so that's a little bit, um, about what I'm making. I'm kind of making, like, I guess my theme of what I'm making is junk junk stuff or stuff you'd find in the attic um and then I, I haven't aged these boxes so i have these boxes with like the lid that flips up it doesn't really i mean i guess you could close it if you wanted to because i i made it off of a real box pattern then i also have this box um that this one needs to be aged these have been aged a little bit i haven't done like any like paint or anything on them um, but I want to kind of make them look like they've been soiled. Rub the polystyrene to make the balls come apart. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's kind of the direction I'm going. If y'all have any suggestions, um, yeah, I still don't know if I'm going to post them on Etsy because I just don't want to do all this work and then not have anything in September still. But I have a lot of stuff in my Etsy store that's never sold, so I'll have that. And I'll be selling an entire furnished dollhouse there. Oh, skeins of yarn is a good idea. Um, trying to think what else. Maybe I could do like little like bottles of spray paint or jars, perfume bottles make those out of beads so lots of things I could do it's easy to make the little cardboard boxes I can just like put on a movie and just cut and fold and cut and fold so those aren't too bad to make it's just the filling them that I didn't quite know what to do so he's still drying a bit but you can see it's giving it a much more like shiny texture and it is going to look a little bit dented um, but of course I'm okay with that, but I think it's going to turn out well. I'll just have to make the little, um, table for it. Use little beads, old newspapers, picture frames. I have, um, some picture frames I want to make, um, uh, molds from and then make those out of polymer clay, but I'm scared they're going to break. But if they were glued into the boxes, then they probably wouldn't break. So that might work. Books could make books. Books take a lot of work to make if you make them, but if they're in a box, then I just have to make 
little little like book covers and stuff so hmm thanks for the ideas I just gotta get myself organized and uh, moving forward because I also want to make furniture pieces and I want to make some messy trays where they're like um, like tea trays but like the cups have fallen over and there's like stuff coming out of them and um, uh, so yeah there's lots of different things I want to make I just have to make the time for it and I just realized an entire month of summer has gone by and I thought I had this whole summer ahead of me and how did a whole month go by I don't know so well I think what I'm gonna have to do is after this guy dries I'm going to probably do kind of like a speed paint just talk a little bit about how I finish this guy up and then when I take the live stream down because I usually take it down off of um, YouTube and then I will just add that to the end of this live stream so if you want to see how it got finished you can always check that out I always repost them on Friday unless it takes me a little bit longer to finish this because I didn't get as far as I thought I would I'm sorry this is all I did in two hours <laughs> seems like not very much um, but yeah if you want to see how it kind of finishes up come back on Friday and it should be at the end of the video and I'll make sure that the title if I did finish it the title card of that video will be a picture of it so you'll know for sure if I got it finished some tins from old makeup as kitchen pans in a box that's a good idea too um, I actually have some of those I have some Mary Kay um, tins that I could put in a box it's a good idea um so anyway thank you guys so much for joining me tonight thank you for all your suggestions and um as always just thanks for chatting with me that always helps me keep going um and working and um yeah i'm definitely going to check out um looking up looking into getting some snaps and um yeah so thanks for that suggestion i think that'll make it a little bit easier um, Gail I always try to post at 8 a.m. on Friday it won't be another live stream it'll just be a video that's posted and it won't um, it won't go away so it'll just be up there so um, if you want to see it right when it comes on it should be 8 but like I said that's if I get it finished so um, I have a Facebook page it's Bentley House Minis and if you look at the bottom like way down at the bottom where it says social media it's like a little gray bar going by it has the link to all my social media um, it has my Twitter which is new I don't really know what to do with it so it's not that exciting um, I have my Instagram which I also post um, when I'm working on things so sometimes you can see ahead of time what I'm working on um, and then my Etsy's on there my YouTube and then I think scrolling in a second is my Facebook page and um, you can contact me through there or sometimes you can see updates or like I'll tell you when I'm live streaming that type of stuff so thank you guys so much happy fourth you stay cool as well and stay dry if you're in Houston be careful and um, if you stayed up really late at night get some sleep <laughs> and uh, yeah Hopefully, um, I will have the finale up for you guys on Friday. So have a good evening, morning, afternoon, and I will see you guys in the next live stream. I, get, I always look that up, so hold on. That was a good outro, too, and I ruined it because I'm going to look up the next one. Hold on. The next one is still summertime, so it will still be at night. It's going to be, um, oh my goodness, it's the first day, August 1st, is going to be the live stream. So, August 1st will be our next one at 7 p.m. It'll still be the summertime time. So, all right, I'll see you guys when I see you. Figure out how to turn the thing off. Okay, <laughs> bye. All right, guys, so let's finish this up. 
After the wood glue dried, this is what it looked like. And I decided to take some matte gray paint. This is just acrylic paint. And I painted it all over anywhere that wasn't that wood paper finish. And this is what it ends up looking like. And then I take some silver metallic paint and then paint that on over the gray. The gray helps the silver show up better. If you paint it straight onto the wood glue, as you can see, the silver paint is really see-through. So it's really important to do a gray coat of paint underneath the silver. So after that's completely painted, this is what it looks like. You can see that the wood glue had some little bubbles in it. So if you're wanting a more smooth finish, you may need to kind of go back and pop those bubbles if you see any. Then I'm gonna take some gold paint, and this is to make it look like the metallic finish on the coffee maker has kind of tarnished. Over time, any kind of metal is going to get some kind of I don't know, is it burnishing? Is that the word? I'm not quite sure. It's just going to change colors a little bit. So that's why I can I take a little bit of gold and just run it over the top, dry brush it over the silver. So now I'm going back to my mat board and I'm just cutting some little small rectangular pieces and these are what are going to become my buttons. So there's two in the top left and then there's four in the center at the bottom. So I made six of these and then I put them onto a piece of masking tape and I'm just taking some black acrylic paint and painting them all over. Once that dries, I can take a pair of tweezers and I'm gonna dip the back of them in some tacky glue and then just attach that. Um, I'm looking at my photo reference while I do this to make sure I get them in the right spot. On the bottom, I'm gonna start in the center and then work my way out so that I know the buttons are centered. Um, but I'm just gonna do that for all six buttons and make sure they're on straight and where I like them. For the other side of the top of the coffee maker, I need to print off the Bun-O-Matic um, logo and I just found one on the internet and then shrunk it and print it and then I cut it out real careful and I'm just going to glue it where it, it's not the same logo as the one in the picture I showed you, but it's, it'll work. So now I went back um, on the suggestion of the people in my stream and I found some sewing findings. These are called finishing washers. I'm not sure what they're for. This is from my husband's grandmother's um, sewing stash. And I, I decided I liked the size, but I wanted them to be a little bit flatter. So I tried to hammer them and whatever they are made out of, um, it's uh, good quality. <laughs> they were not very easy to smash. So I just got some pliers and then I just manually smashed them down as evenly as I could. And this is gonna make them a bit flatter. Here you can see the difference between the one I flattened and the original. And I did this because I felt like it just needed to be flatter, closer to the surface of the coffee maker. Now, because these pieces are metal, I'm going to use E6000 glue, and I'm just gonna put these around the edge of the round pieces and attach them as carefully as I can to the piece that I've been working on. And I wanna make sure to attach all four what would be coffee pot warmers. After that's finished, my favorite part, I get to age it. So, um, my typical technique is to take some watered down paint. So this is black paint. And I'm going to do this all over the coffee maker. And usually I use a bunch of different colors, but this time I just used black. And because I had used the gold dry brush effect, it really gave the black several different kind of shades once I went over it. So I was happy with just using watered down black paint. Now I'm using a combination of brown paint, uh, fine art sand, and glue to create a rust effect. If you would like to see me mix this together, um, you can check out my video on the, um, let's see, it's in the Abandoned Coffee Shop playlist. Um, it's the one where I make the little blue toaster coffee pot. It shows you more specifically how I made the rust.
But here's how it is all over the piece. And um, I made sure to get it onto the coffee pot warmer sections. So now I'm taking a really thin piece of cardstock and I'm going to be rolling it up into a very tight coil. This is what's going to make the coffee filter holder that slides underneath the coffee pot section. And so once I get it rolled up, I had to do that off camera, it takes a little bit of practice and patience. Um, I made, I decided I wanted it to be a little bit larger so I added another long strip of cardstock and rolled it up again. Now the reason I'm doing this coil and putting um, the tacky glue on it is because I'm going to push the center of the coil out to make it into a funnel shape and the glue that I'm putting on there is going to keep it from coming unraveled and it'll dry in that shape. So I will try to insert the um, original picture here so you can see the piece that I'm making. It's the little thing that holds the coffee filter. And then I just took another thin strip of cardstock and made a handle and glued it onto the side. Now I'm taking some more wood glue and I'm just going to use my finger and put it all along the outside of the, um, just call it the filter holder. And uh, you can see that it gives it kind of a plasticky smooth finish. And um, I made sure to leave some ridges because you can see in the photo it has ridges. Now to attach it to the coffee maker, I had to put a little extra piece because it hangs down quite far. And so I painted that extra little coil piece in there black so that you don't see it very well. And then I, pat I painted the foil hol filter holder <laughs> uh, gray. So here you can see I have installed it. It is a little bit crooked, but if it's been sitting there for years, I don't think there's a problem with it being crooked. I think it looks fantastic. I really like how this turned out. Um, I think it's a definite upgrade for my abandoned coffee shop as opposed to the toaster oven coffee pot thing. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I hope you enjoyed this short little tutorial at the end. And I will see you hopefully in my next live stream and in my next video. Bye.